Okay, campers, rise and shine, but don't go outside, cause it's COVID out there. So wash your little hands and dry, there ain't no reason. Rise and shine, but don't go outside, cause it's COVID. So wash your little hands and there ain't no reason you should go Campers, rise and shine, but don't go outside because it's COVID out there. But today is Sunday, so at least we get to worship with our church family from home. Sunday. When the days feel like they just run together, Sunday comes along and puts that smile right back on your face. Good morning, Hilltop. It is great to have you as part of our live stream this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are ready to worship and praise the Lord this morning. I want to encourage you to stand up. Let's put our hands together and give Him praise this morning. Come on. Go ahead and turn it up. He inhabits the praise of His people. You are here. As we lift you up, you are riding on our praise. Be enthroned, Lord, over everything. You are seated in our praise. Here we go. This is prophetic. I can feel it in the air. We lift our praise and you change the atmosphere, Lord. With hearts open now, everybody singing out. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Turn it up. This sound of praise, make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name over all. Come on, sing it out as we praise. As we praise, I can feel the change as your presence now invades. Hear the sound of the broken chains. Prison doors are giving way. This is prophetic. I can feel it in the air. We lift our praise and you change the atmosphere. Come on now. With hearts open now, everybody singing out. I am free. Turn it up. This sound of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up. And shout his name Come on. over all. Turn it up, this sound of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name over all. Come on, keep praising him this morning. Here we go. Our praise goes up, Lord. Your rain comes down. Come on, sing that again. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Sing it again. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Shouts of praise, we celebrate. King of glory, enter in. You are riding on our praise, oh Lord. Here we go. Turn it up, this sound of praise. Make it louder than any other. Lift him up and shout his name. Come on. 
Yes, God. Oh, we know you're standing with us, Lord. And we will not be moved. You're standing with us. We will not be moved. When everything around is shaking, you're not changing. We will not be. We will not be moved. Oh, we trust in you, God. Lord, we lean on your promises. We worship you. Oh, come on, church, let's worship him this morning. We serve a mighty God. Where can I go that you don't know? Where would I be if not for your love? God, I receive your grace and peace. It's not what I've done, but what you've done in me. Singing, we will not be moved. You're standing with us, we will not be Trust, oh, trust in your name. We're holding back to your promises. What you have spoken will surely come to pass. Singing, we will not be moved. You're standing with us, we will not be moved. When everything around is shaking, you're not changing. We will not be, we will not be moved. Oh, this failed us, Lord. Church, sing this out with us. Oh, I'm still standing. Say, oh, 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 I'm still standing. Oh, 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 I'm standing still. And if I fall, I know you'll catch me. You won't let go. You never will. We sing it out. Oh, oh, oh I'm still standing. Oh, oh, oh I'm standing still, and if I fall, I know you'll catch me. You won't let go, you never will. Oh, I'm still, oh, 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 I'm still standing. Oh, 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 I'm standing still, and if I fall, I know you'll catch me. You won't let go. One time, you sing it out. Say, oh. And if I fall, I know you'll catch me. You won't let go. You never will. And we will not be moved. You're standing with us. We will not be moved. When everything around is shaking, you're not changing. We will not be moved. You're standing with us. We will not be Everything around is shaking, you're not changing. We will not be, we will not be moved. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We trust in you, Lord. We trust in you, Father. We won't be moved. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Oh, you are good, good, Father. Amen, amen. Oh, you are worthy of our praise, King Jesus. You're worthy of every song, Lord. We build our life upon your truth, Jesus. Just take a moment to worship you, Father.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing. You're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We sing Jesus, the name above. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. We sing holy. Holy, there is no one like. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. You are worthy. You're worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. We sing holy and holy. your truth. Sing this out with us, church. We declare it this morning. I will build my life upon Oh uh -huh. 
Pillow Top. Thanks for watching. I've got a few things I'd like to share with you. If you're watching on Facebook, would you share this stream right now? Let's encourage as many people as possible with today's message. Want to stay current with what's happening at Hilltop? If you visit our website, you can download our new Hilltop app. Think of it as a digital bulletin. With the app, you can see announcements, watch our online messages, and stay up to date with what's going on. Do you know someone who is struggling to make ends meet and could use some food? We want to remind you that our food pantry ministry is up and running. If you or anyone you know is in need, have them stop by the church office Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and noon. Do you miss seeing your Hilltop friends and family? Join us online today, immediately following this service in our Hilltop online lobby. Click the Zoom link on Facebook or YouTube chat to see and say hi to everyone you've missed over the last few months. And again, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you next week. Dear God, school's different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray. So that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Good morning, Hilltop. And uh, again, I just want to welcome you to our online services via YouTube or Facebook. This is not only a shout out to Hilltop, but also to our uh, sister church, our parent affiliated church, the, Bur the Bridge in Berkeley. Again, we're very glad to be with you here today. We're praying as you're praying that God will bring a remedy to what is happening in our day and time, this COVID-19. We're also praying for you that God will meet your specific needs, whatever they may be, financially, emotionally, relationally, uh, physically, in every way. Because we know that the scripture says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He's the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords, and he's in charge of it all. So again, we're glad that you're with us here today. And um, in just a moment, we're going to pray. But I want to remind you that... Uh, Hilltop Community Church is still reaching out in our community and around the world, as you saw last week, reaching out through Convoy Hope. And uh, this week, you'll see a special video from uh, Project Rescue. And what an incredible thing. Uh, Beth Grant will be giving you uh, an update of what is going on in that incredible ministry there. But these are some of the things that we're involved in. And you have the opportunity to give today through the internet, uh, through our website, or through text messaging, or you can give through a postage paid envelope that looks like this right here. And uh, we want to encourage you, if you'd like postage paid envelopes, you can call the church at 510-223-2431, and we'll send you however many you request, and you don't even have to pay for the postage. Well, let's pray and ask for God's blessing upon this uh, time of gathering. Now, Father, again, we thank you for the privilege, and it is a privilege that we have to learn from you. 
Lord, even in these uncertain times that we have the the revelation of your word, the authority of your word, and Lord, we have your Holy Spirit that binds us together. I thank you, Lord, that the church is not just about a building. In fact, the building is the least of a church. The church is the people that gather in your name, and we gather in your name here today. We pray, Lord, that you bless the the gifts as we render them to you in obedience to what your word says to bring the whole tithe into your storehouse. And even if that means through electronic means, Lord, we are grateful for what you've done in times past. And we know that we sow seeds for the future and that, Lord, we'll reap a harvest if we do not faint. So, Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, Debbie and friends in Northern California, Nevada. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you. Several months ago, something happened in Southern Asia that has never happened to our knowledge before. Because of the challenge of containing or trying to contain the COVID-19 virus, red light districts in Southern Asia were suddenly by the government totally locked down and suddenly Women and children who have been in sexual slavery were forced to either leave or stay in place without food, without means of living, without any source of income. Suddenly they were in crisis, but at the same time, the doors were open for them to walk out of slavery. They began the journey home to villages from which they had been trafficked. But thankfully on the journey, some of our Project Rescue workers found out and reconnected with women that they had met over the course of ministry. And those women started saying, can you help us begin a new life? Could there have been more welcome words? Suddenly, Project Rescue, who has worked to see one woman at a time find freedom over these 24 years, Suddenly, we had thousands of women that are out of the red light district and have the opportunity to choose freedom. In the middle of a pandemic, a crisis, suddenly forever freedom was born. As we begin to share this opportunity with our churches and friends, they responded in stunning ways. We are in the middle of an economic challenging time. But in spite of that, our friends and churches have responded with so much generosity that we were able to start helping women find freedom. In the last several weeks, over 125 women have taken the steps to begin a new life and freedom in Jesus. And now we have an opportunity like we've never had before. We have a window of weeks ahead of us, only weeks before pimps, and traffickers are putting pressure on those very same women to go back into prostitution. But with God's help and with your help, we are able to say no. We will provide you with vocational training, the largest effort of vocational training Project Rescue has ever established, so that women could have everything they need to go into a new life of freedom through Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing and sharing in this great time of opportunity. God has turned this pandemic into a moment of freedom for thousands of women. Thank you for seizing that moment with us. God bless you. Well, we've been doing a series called Pathways, Choose Wisely, and we, we're talking about making good choices and embracing some real values for our lives. Today, the pathway we're talking about is a pathway of honesty. Now, just before we get started in this, I want to say thank you to so many of you who have been so kind in, in sending uh, uh, your, your well wishes and also... Um, uh, your kindness toward the ministry that has been taking place in these messages. I've heard so much from many of you. And I, again, I say all the time, I'm just the donkey Jesus rides in on. What I mean by that is, 
is what is passed on to me, I'm passing on to you. And I'm a student in God's word. I'm a student for those who are mentors, both close and far. And I've been so grateful for the mentorship of those who have imparted uh, teaching to me. And as Paul instructed Timothy, and now I instruct you, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul said to Timothy, commit to faithful men and women these things that you've seen and heard. Now, I'm, I'm doing that for you as well here today. So this series on pathways is, is for your benefit, but not just for your benefit, but for the benefit of those that you will instruct with your words and with your actions, with your deeds. And so I want to thank you for that. But we are in this series on pathway to honesty, and, and we know that uh, the Bible has a significant amount of instruction on honesty examples of men and women that were honest, examples of men and women who weren't honest and things that happened to them. The most radical stories found in the book of Acts chapter 5 about a couple named Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament, they weren't very honest. In fact, because of their dishonesty, they were struck down and died. I mean, how many of you are glad that God doesn't use that same technique today? I mean, Hilltop, uh, again, I think would be empty, not just because of our governor and the COVID, I, I think I'd be all alone with no one to talk to. Yeah, right. I'd be as guilty as anybody else. The irony of honesty is that all of us make a big deal about it, and we want it, and we really, in practicality, uh, we really give it very little value. When parents are asked to describe the number one quality they want in their children, well, they'll say it's honesty. A Huffington Post article a few years ago said University of Massachusetts psychologist Robert Feldman has studied Lyon for more than a decade, and in his research, he's reached some startling conclusions. Most shockingly is that 60% of people lie during a typical 10-minute conversation, and that, that they average two to three lies during that short time frame. I mean, one of the things I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, knowing I was going to, uh, that I've been thinking about is, uh, knowing that I'm going to do this, is, is uh, what we do in regard to Making the uh, making opportunities, uh, how many opportunities there are to be dishonest with ourselves and with those in every con everyday conversations, um, every phone call, every interaction. I mean, we have dozens and do dozens of opportunities to be, to be dishonest. It's amazing to me how often we are tempted to be dishonest. In an online magazine called Best Life, March 13, 2020 edition, had an article titled The 40 Lies Everyone Tells on a Daily Basis. <laughs> on a daily basis now. And here are a few of them. Now, I want you to be honest. How many of these little white lies do you tell that you told this past week? I know I'm, in doing some soul searching, it was a little bit shocking to me. How about this one? Telling somebody, I'm almost there. Or, hey... I must have gotten your email, but it must have went to my spam folder. Or, oh man, I'm sorry, I guess my phone died. Uh, or how about this one? Man, my phone's been acting kind of weird, and I, I guess I didn't get your call. Well, or how about this one, when you're talking to your wife and she's asking how much it was for whatever you purchased, and you say, well, it wasn't that expensive. Or how about when somebody asks you about your TV watching, and, and you turn and say, well, you know, I really don't watch that much TV. Or how about this when somebody's waiting on you, say, hey, hey, wait, listen, I'm almost finished. Or how about this one when you see somebody and you just say, hey, it's so great to see you when in reality it wasn't. Or how about this? Uh, on the phone, you're, you're trying to, uh, uh, you don't want to be talking to somebody, say, hey, I'm having trouble hearing you. Can I, can I call you later? <laughs> and you could hear them just fine. Or how about this one? Uh, somebody asks you how things are going. You say, yeah, oh, it's good. It's, it's fine. When in reality, it's falling apart. Uh, or when somebody asks you, hey, you're looking good today. You lost some weight and, and you haven't lost anything. But you say, you know, yeah, I, I try to get to the gym about three or four times a week before the COVID. But now, you know, in reality, your gym membership, your gym hasn't seen you in a year. Or how about when somebody says to you in the medical profession, hey, the doctor will call you right back. <laughs> you know, and that's that's kind of some of the things that we go through. Those are some of the, the the casual lies that we tell ourselves and tell others. Dishonesty has many different faces in our life, but it has one common result. Dishonesty strangles life out of us. 
And I want to take a look at the problem of dishonesty and then focus on some practical steps that we can take to be men and women that move toward an honest life. You see, dishonesty is promoted in our culture. Our culture endorses untruth, embraces untruth, and practices untruth consistently. The residue of dishonesty is flying around everywhere. We have to, we, we've come to expect people to, to be dishonest. I mean, isn't that sad that we expect people to be dishonest? We expect a degree of untruthfulness in our political system. Hey, we expect that, don't we? We expect politicians to lie to us. We expect a degree of untruthfulness in advertising. I mean, we know over years and years of watching different advertisements that, you know what? They lie to us. They're dishonest. We know it, and yet we tolerate it. Most guys find out that they, after, after they buy their first bottle of cologne, that, that advertisers lie. I mean, we bought it, we tried it, and we walked out in the world, and all the women don't come running to us like, like they do in the commercials. It just doesn't work like, like the commercials say. We also expect a degree of untruthfulness even in the church. In the last 30 plus years, Christianism has taken a major ethical hit with some leaders and their moral failings that have created skeptic, skepticism in much of our world. Uh, it used to be that uh, on Mondays you could get free golf in area golf courses. Years, I'm talking years and years ago. Pastor Stewart told me that. But now you can't do that. In fact, Mondays, you know, uh, uh, you know I, I asked one guy one time, I said, why, why is it they don't give free golf in, in, on, on Mondays to pastors anymore? And he, said, he simply smiled. He said, because everybody became a pastor. It's amazing to me. No education requirements. Just hey, I'm a pastor. Get a you know, pay for uh, PS Print to to give you some some uh, 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 business cards, and now you're a pastor. Oh, you know, lying. I mean, we expect a degree of untruthfulness in business. Seven out of ten business people surveyed said they compromise their values to conform to company standards. Yet companies are asking employees to take integrity tests before they join that company. We expect a degree of dishonesty or untruthfulness from students. An article in Vogue's uh, Recode by Rebecca Hiley, uh, May 4th, uh, she said this, paranoid about cheating is, paranoia about cheating is making online education terrible for everyone. A sudden switch to online learning reveals a slew of challenges for educators. The article talks about online tests and how schools are using artificial intelligence and recording webcams to monitor truth in test taking. It, it, it's true. From the White House to the schoolhouse, truth is in trouble. It's not reserved for any age, age category. It affects all of us. See, dishonesty is everywhere. One of the reasons it runs so fast through our culture is because dishonesty, dishonesty is present in our nature. It's deeper than just our culture. It's, a, it's our nature. There's something about you and I that's so warped and flawed that we are drawn to untruth. Dr. Leonard Keeler, who invented the lie detector test, interviewed 25,000 people and he came to the conclusion that people are basically dishonest. At the core of humanity, there is dishonesty. Those of us who read the Bible, that shouldn't be any surprise to us. We know that in the book of Genesis, we're told that dishonesty has plunged this world into the mess that it's in. The Bible, in many different places, says that the heart is deceitful and corrupt. Who can know it? Because we're all a part of a fallen race, and we're, we all have, we have wickedness that lives within us because of the fall. We have a resistance to the truth. It's not only in our culture, it's not only in our nature, dishonesty is part of our spiritual stru structure. It's much bigger than ourselves. There's a, there's a struggle. It's part of a spiritual struggle. There's a struggle going on in the cosmos. Call it, call it, call it what you want, uh, but it's light versus darkness or good versus evil, Satan versus God. It's the eternal combat that's bigger than most of us, uh, bigger than we're able to understand. You and I are the object of this spiritual battle. Basically, it comes down to this. It's truth versus lies. The Bible tells us that God is the father of truth. The Bible also tells us that Satan is the father of lies. John 8, says, he, talking about Satan, has always hated the truth. There's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he's a liar and the father of lies. The Bible doesn't candy coat it. Basically, basically it's saying God is 
uh, on one side and Satan is on the other and they're opposed to one another. And you and I have a choice. Do we follow the culture, much of what Satan has set up, or do we follow the Creator? When it comes to the Creator, God's view of dishonesty is simply this. He hates it. God hates dishonesty. The, the, the word is not used very often in the Bible that he actually hates it, but the word hate means it's disgusting, detestable, utterly, and thoroughly repulsive. Dishonesty is repulsive to God. So why does he hate it? Because he's the truth. And dishonesty is a perversion of his character. God places a high priority, a premium on truth, and he wants you and I to have a love affair with honesty. A love affair. And the question we've got to ask is, so what? Just because God wants it, does that mean I need to be honest? I mean, uh, what's happened as a result of dishonesty? Well, first of all, we're, we're skeptical. Why? Because we've been lied to over and over. When we have a conversation with somebody, in the back of our mind, we're wondering whether they're telling the truth or not. Are they really telling us the truth? We become skeptical. Number two, trust is broken down. We are a culture of people, a nation where we don't trust anybody anymore because over and over there's been dishonesty. People have lied to us. We've been burned by it. It doesn't matter who. Number three, dishonesty has made us insecure people. I mean, why do little kids say, cross your heart and hope to die, stick a needle in your eye? They're saying, when you tell me something, I want to know, are you really honest? Because I want to get my arms around us honesty. There's something in them that longs for it and craves it. You and I have that same thing. When you don't have it, we're insecure. It's basic to our human design. We're, we're looking for security that truthfulness brings. We wonder why everybody's walking around the world insecure. It's because we don't have truth. Some people think, well, honesty, yeah, that's a nice idea. Well, they miss the whole point. It's not a nice idea. It's a command of God. He loves us so much, he wants us to have security. He wants us to have trust in a relationship. He doesn't want us to be skeptical. He knows that until we have trust, we won't have security in our relationships. We won't have security in our business. We won't have security in our church or our family until we feel like we're being told the truth. We're left insecure. And when we're insecure, we're frustrated, disillusioned, disappointed, shattered, defeated. It keeps us from living life the way God intended it. I think the biggest thing I found in my life is dishonesty wounds my soul. Dishonesty wounds my soul. Why is it that when somebody's dishonest with you, even years ago, when you see them or hear their name, isn't there a little bit of pain brought up? Your soul was wounded. Why is it we can remember specific instances in our life when we were deceptive and dishonest years and years ago? It's because our souls were wounded at the core of who we are. That's what happens. You know, we remember the acts of deception. It's because it wounds our soul. It, opened up, it opens up the door to more deception. We open the door to deception and we keep walking through it. The more we open it up, the more it squeezes on our conscience and builds a protective coating around our conscience where we don't even feel deceit anymore. Now, I want to help you tell the truth. I believe deep within uh, that, uh, that we want to tell the truth. I believe there's a wickedness about our nature because of the fall and because of sin. But I also believe there's a, a, a wonder about our nature. We're created in the image of God and something deep down within us really wants truth. I want to give you some steps to lead toward truth. So I want to give you some steps towards an honest life. Proverbs 23, 23 says, and the NIV version says, Buy the truth and do not sell it. Whatever the cost, it's worth it. Pay the price. Whatever it costs to have your life characterized by truth, the scripture says it's worth it. The truth means to be trustworthy, stable, sure. Pay the price. So what is the price? What is the price? The first price, I think, is to take an honest inventory of your truthfulness. This is going to be a tough for, for some of us because deception has been part of our lives and, and we're not even going to realize that, that we were deceitful until you start doing a little bit of homework. I, I, you know, years ago I had a, had a mole on the side of my head. I, I had it many years. I, I never thought much about it until after church one Sunday night. 
uh, I was talking to a little girl and she asked me what was on the side of my head. You know, nobody had ever said anything about it and, and I ignored it. And after the little girl noticed it and called attention to it, well, I started noticing every day. And after talking to a friend about it, he warned me, he said, hey, you know, that could be cancerous. So I went to the doctor and I had it removed. And it wasn't cancerous, but I, uh, the point is, I didn't pay much attention to it until someone called it out. I never thought about it. The same is with honesty. Some of this is going to take some surgery because it's not really easy once we've evaluated ourselves. We've got to ask ourselves three questions in this evaluation process. Where am I being dishonest? How am I being dishonest? And why am I being dishonest? Well, let's look at where. We, we, we may be honest at home, but we're dishonest at work or vice versa. Uh, vice versa, marriage, work, friends, myself. I don't have a problem with that. There's no big deal. I can't stop that. I, I can stop that anytime. All we're doing is lying to ourselves. It's called denial. God is big enough to forgive us of those sins, but denial is the problem. Whether it's our lifestyle or whatever. Where I want to spend the majority of this time is how am I being dishonest? How am I being dishonest? Well, sometimes we're dishonest in, in such a way as to protect others. It's true. You know, we want to protect people and make sure everybody's happy and loving each other. Uh, we could we could be out to dinner and my wife and I could be out to dinner and, and somebody will come up to me. And of course, this is pre-COVID. And, and uh, in fact, even recently, uh, someone, uh, my wife and I were at, at uh, Chick-fil-A and, and, and someone came out and said, hey, Pastor Jim. And fortunately, I recognized her. But I thought, I thought even with her mask on, praise the Lord for that. But, but, uh, and I said, Hey, but there've been so many times where somebody's come up and say, Hey, do you remember me? Do you know me? And I'm like, oh, you, you, you look a little familiar to me. And, and my, my wife will ask me, do you know that person? And, and I have to admit to my wife, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I can, but that was deceitful. It was dishonest. And I was doing that to protect them personally. I didn't want them to be hurt that I didn't notice them or didn't, didn't know who they were. Another way is to, you know, with slander or gossip. Uh, those are cousins. This is a form of dishonesty. Gossip is saying something you like about somebody you don't. <laughs> gossip is saying something you like about somebody you don't. Slander actually comes in the Old Testament from the word spy, which means to expose and defeat. Um, uh, that's what happens. Uh, how about another one? Exaggeration. How do we lie? Through exaggeration. This is where we make ourselves look better than we actually are. The Greek, for, the Greek word for exaggeration <laughs> is resume. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But here's another one. How we lie is through silence. Silence is another way we're dishonest. I lie to you and I keep truth from you that I know could help you. When, when we're silent and don't want to say anything, there's a form of dishonesty. This is not uh, this is not licensed to say anything, of course, but the Bible has, says there's a balance there. It says, speak the truth in love. Don't be silent when you need to tell the truth, but you do it in love. There's another way is, uh, that, that we uh, lie is through deceit. This is where we disguise the truth. Many of us are experts at this, kind of shade the truth, kind of blur the lines. These, these are the, the white lies that everybody thinks is not going to hurt. Pastor Stewart told me a story of a pastor who had a parishioner who loved to give him pies. And once, once in a sermon, he referenced how he loved pie. And so each week, this very kind lady would make him a pie. Unfortunately, this lady was not a good cook. After the first week, she'd come to the pastor and ask him how he liked the pie. And, it, and to be honest, it was a, it was a horrible pie. It, it was distasteful, the, but the pastor didn't have the heart to tell her that she made a horrible pie. So he disguised the truth. Week after week, this went on, and so the pastor devised a plan. He put a big black spot on his garbage can, and each week when, when asked about the pie, the pastor would say, oh, Sister so-and-so, boy, did that hit, that pie hit the spot. That hit the spot. Well, that, what is that? That's shading the truth. It's not really telling the truth at all. So how else are we dishonest? With the use of our time. For those you are paid by the hour. I mean, we shade the truth. We, we stand by the, 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 the clock uh, for five, ten minutes uh, waiting to punch out on time. But in reality, we weren't on time at all. We were cheating the company. 
How else? Through compromise, justifying. Perhaps you were given a few extra bucks and change and, and we justify it by saying, hey, well, it's their fault. Yeah, man, God must have wanted me to have this extra couple bucks. We justify it, move on. When we justify it, 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 it calms our convictions and deafens our deceit. We say, well, this isn't going to hurt anybody. Like recently, I, I saw where a public figure was talking about the, 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 uh, the looting that was going on and said, hey, the businesses have insurance. You know, who cares if, if people go in and break the windows and steal all the merchandise? And we justify it by saying that they have insurance. Wow. We, we say it won't hurt anyone. But in reality, it does. It breaks down trust everywhere. And it's nauseating. It's nauseating to God. I mean, if you're doing an honest inventory, if we're doing an honest inventory of our truthfulness, we've got to ask, how am I being dishonest? And we've got to get at the root. Some roots are fear. Peter lied because of fear. Cain lied because of pride. Potiphar's wife lied because of anger. Joseph's brothers lied because of jealousy. It's all part of the inventory is getting at the why. Why do we lie? The bottom line is this. You and I choose to be dishonest. We choose dishonesty. And I encourage you at the end of each day to say, Lord, how honest was I today? And that may be tough, but it's far better than, uh, than embracing the disease of lying, the cancer of lying. Number two, make an honest evaluation of your gains and losses. If I'm going to be really honest with you, I've got to say that when we are dishonest, hey, there are sometimes some gains there. We can gain things. I can cheat on my taxes and gain more money. I can lie about something and gain more time, more influence, a better reputation. There are some gains. But when we look at those gains, we've got to determine if they're more appealing than the truth. If they are, we've just shouted that we're walking and living our lives, life the world's way. We're, we're choosing the world's way. The Bible's very clear that those gains will be temporary. Temporary. It's kind of like the Olympian who won the 100-yard dash years ago, claimed to be the fastest human in the world. And within a week or so, he was stripped of his medal, and he was the biggest cheat in the world. He had pumped himself full of steroids. In a very real way, gains will be temporary when they're dishonest gains. We do lose. Proverbs 13, 21 says, Trouble chases sinners while blessings chase the righteous. Well, you want to notice that word blessings? We're going to end on this in a little bit, but here, but, but how, do, how, how does God bless us when we're honest? Well, we may gain some things, but what do we lose? If we're dishonest, what do we lose? Well, first of all, we lose character because dishonesty develops character. There's a difference between character and reputation. It's very important to understand this. Reputation is what you think about me or what I think about you. And character is what I really am when no one's looking. Character is who you are when no one's looking at you. Honesty and integrity is when reputation and character come together and they're consistent. That's integrity. That's honesty. Um, we talk about character all the time. We say character is the one thing we can take with us to eternity. You know what else we can take with us? We can pass character on to our kids. We can share the gospel with others. Being a person of character can invade our family's world. Proverbs 20 verse 7 says, Good people who live honest lives will be a blessing to their children. Home is where character is tough. What people who are the closest to you say about you is the real test of character. When reputation and character come together and they're consistent, that's honesty. We lose, we lose character when we're dishonest. Second, we lose spiritual maturity because honesty develops spiritual maturity. Ephesians 4 verse 15 in the New Living Translation says, Instead, we hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of the body. When I'm dishonest, I'm not facing the sin that's keeping me from growing. When I'm honest, I deal with the sin that's keeping me from growing. I deal with it. But, and, and, and when I'm honest, it propels me towards spiritual maturity. Which brings me to number three. The third thing I lose is I lose security when I'm dishonest because honesty develops security. 
security in me. That's why I lose. I begin to get comfortable with the truth. I begin to, to get comfortable with the truth and, and I don't have to look back over my, my shoulder. Uh, I can get security. I, I'm secure who I am. I provide security in my relationships and, 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 and people that depend on me can trust me, my family and everyone else around. Their security. We lose that when we're dishonest. Proverbs eleven six says, doing right brings freedom to honest people. Again, did you notice the word freedom? Mark Twain said it this way, it's easier to tell the truth That way you don't have to keep track of anything. Boy, is that true. There's freedom and security. But those who are not trustworthy, the scripture says, will be caught by their own desires. After you do this evaluation of your gains and losses, you need to ask, well, what's the cost? What's it going to cost me to be a person of integrity, a person of honesty? There's a cost to being honest. Now, remember the Bible says, and we already looked at it in Proverbs 23, 23, buy it. Buy the truth, purchase it, do whatever it takes. So then you've got to ask the question, am I willing to change? Am I willing to pay the price to live a life pleasing to God? Where God can look into my life and say, I would have said it just like that, Jim. That was honest. Or I would have done that business deal just like that, Jim. That was, that was honest. I would have treated that family just like that. That was honest. I'm willing to pay the price. Am I willing to pay the price to live a life pleasing to God? So what does it mean, really, pleasing to God? First Chronicles 29, verse 17, again, New Living Translation says, I know, my God, that you examine our heart and rejoice when you find integrity there. Again, notice it says rejoice. Is God rejoicing in your life? Is he seeing honesty in it? Which brings you to number three, love God and pursue a relationship with him. So what does this have to do with honesty? You see, the more intimate I am with God, the more compelled I am to be honest. If God is invading my life, it's very difficult to be dishonest. If the Holy Spirit is residing in my life, the Holy Spirit will send an internal signal to me when I'm being dishonest. I'll feel a twinge. Oh, when I don't have an intimate relationship with God, I don't hear those signals. And it leads toward being a chronic deceiver. I want to pause here for just a moment. And some of you might be feeling some conviction right now. To be clear, it's, it's not my job to convict people. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. My job is to communicate. And if, and, and if what I say to people brings a feeling of conviction, then, then I simply say this, congratulations. That means God is working in your life to get your attention. If you hear a message about this and, and you don't feel conviction, perhaps that means that you've opened the door to so much deceit and you've closed the door to your soul and you can't, you, you, you can't hear God's voice at all. Notice the word pursue. And that, you know, love God and pursue. Uh, that's listed in point three. That means it never ends. Psalm 51 and 140 says this, but you desire honesty from the heart. Honest people will live in his presence. When I live in the presence of God, I'm compelled to be honest. Now we know this, that relationships can be complicated. When there's a right relationship, there's no weirdness. Nothing's forced and spontaneity of joy and even grief come without effort, but there is a security of we are there for each other. But when a relationship is devalued, when selfishness and pride are present, there's a weirdness, an uncertainty. And yes, you know, words like I love you are said, but, but they're shallow and seem tenuous, weak, not holding up to difficulties of life. And, and in a lot of ways, religion is like this. You know, a kid can say, yeah, I love my dad, but, but there isn't any expression of it at all. A lot of times we say, yeah, I love God. And sure, I go to church, I I watch online, I love God. But when we have a relationship with him, that relationship compels us to obey and act a certain way. And it compels us to be honest, genuine, and sincere. That's what I'm talking about. That pursuit, not just saying, do you love God? You'd say, oh, yes, I love God. But pursue a relationship with him. When you do that, you recognize the value of truth because in that intimacy, you find truth. Proverbs 19, 23, New Living Translation says this, Fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, to conceptualize it, it's really love leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. And that's an important step to this process of truth. Which brings me to number four, practice honesty. Like Nike says, just do it. Practice it in areas of your life. But you don't practice it until you do the work to take the inventories we talked about, to do the evaluation. 
James chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, Living Bible says this, Remember, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. Again, obey. If you don't obey, you're only fooling yourself. Did you catch that? Fooling yourself. Some of your Bibles may say you're deceiving yourself or you're lying to yourself. And then it goes on, for if you just listen and don't obey, it is like looking at your face in a mirror, but doing nothing to improve your appearance. Practice it. How are you going to do, going to apply that this week? Um, again, as I've said so many times, um, information without application is just entertainment. Don't be just entertained. I want to end this message on a positive. If we look at uh, Proverbs 13, 21, it says this, Trouble chases sinners, while blessings chase the righteous. What are the blessings? What are the blessings or the rewards that are going to be happening in our lives? Uh, God promises that there'll be rewards. And so what are those blessings and rewards? Well, God rewards honesty. God blesses honesty. And how does he reward honesty and blesses honesty? By number one, guarding me. Proverbs 2 verse 7 says, He is their shield, protecting those who walk with integrity. That word means to be a bodyguard whose sole purpose is to protect you. If we're honest, he shields us. It's not going to be easy, but he will be our shield. That's a blessing. That's a reward. Number two, by directing me. Proverbs 11.5 says that godly are directed by their honesty. When we're honest, we see God's way. The direction becomes very clear. And that is a reward in confusing pathways as we've been talking about. And third, by sustaining me. Proverbs 12.19 says truth stands the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. Honesty will outlast dishonesty. May 9th, 2020, a New York Times article tells a story of, of how Jose... Uh, Nunez Romanez was headed to the bank to deposit money so he could buy socks online for his grandfather when he came upon a large, clear plastic bag filled with cash next to an ATM. This was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jose took a picture of the bag, and then he placed this huge bag of money in the trunk of his car. Jose didn't realize how much money was in the bag until the police came and they counted it. There was 135 thousand dollars in that plastic bag all wrapped up 20s and and 50s you see what what happened it there was a contractor who was filling atm machines for wells fargo and he forgot the bag after refilling that particular atm he had two bags brought one set it off the side and he forgot it and jose just happened to come alongside and see this bag and what did jose do he he put it in his trunk and called the police and because of his honesty, he was honored by the city of Albuquerque for, for being such a, a, a man of integrity and character. But he was honored not just with a plaque, but with scholarships and sporting goods. And because he had a this desire to pursue a career in police work, the city police department gave him a job as a public service aide, which is an entry-level position for those who want to become law enforcement officers, but don't quite meet the requirements. <laughs> he got all that because... He was honest. He was honest. Now, some would say, how foolish. He could have had $135,000. But the Bible says that ill-gotten gain, things that come by dishonest means, have a way of just running from you. That $135,000 would have just been blown like that. But instead, he had a, a, a reputation of character ascribed to him. And then he had a lifetime of wages coming through that which he loved to do which would be police work. In a, in, in a kind of a physical way, this is an example of what God does in a spiritual way. God is, is in the business of rewarding honesty. You and I have got to determine who do we trust, God's way or the world's way? Who, who's am I, uh, you know, uh, what am I going to decide? What am I going to decide here? Now, this message is something that to be honest with you, I needed. I, I, you say, well, uh, well, Pastor Jim, you're a pastor. Well, I'm not, I'm not exempt to the temptations that anybody else has. In fact, you know, the, the Bible says it, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, the, the longer you've been a Christ follower, the greater your temptation will be. Why? Because 
uh, you have an effect upon others. And this is why we put, I put hedges around myself with my wife and others that are, are on staff that, that they hold me accountable in regard to this, and the board and senior leaders around us. I hope this message gives you something to think about, just like it gave me something to think about. In John 14, 6, Jesus said these words. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. You must come because Jesus is the way, but you need to come in truth. So what is the truth about you? Have you struggled in this pathway? Have you fallen prey to the cultures of the world? Um, again, we're called to a higher level. We're called to, to be humble, to be humble. This is one of the reasons why I say I'm just the donkey that Jesus rides in on. I don't want anybody to be under the delusion that somehow Pastor Jim is some great intellect or whatever. I'm just a man who learns and passes it on. And, and the same is true for you. This is why I've said so many times, it, it's, it's, un, it's unfathomable for me that someone would be so arrogant as a Christ follower to look down their nose at others as if somehow they've attained to, to righteousness on their own. In reality, they're just like the Apostle Paul who said, I refuse to know anything among you but Christ and Him crucified. Paul, though he had the greatest of education, the intellectual uh, esteem among his peers, he refused to know anything but Christ and Him crucified. And this is why He encouraged us when we receive word like this, when we receive information like this, to not just let it be a glancing blow, but to let it fall deep in our hearts and ask the Holy Spirit of God to do a transformative work in us. Perhaps you need to ask Christ to forgive you of the patterns of deceit in your life. Maybe you casually say things and don't really mean them and it's just something that you say. Maybe you're trying to protect people or maybe you're just trying to, to be liked by others, maybe in exaggerations, whatever it may be. But the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth. Can you say the word truth? It matters. And God will hold us accountable for it. With humility, would you ask Him to forgive you? Would you bow your heads with me as I want to pray for you here as we close? And again, while you do this assessment, while you do this evaluation, take an inventory on your life, some of it may sting a little bit, but I want to encourage you, embrace it. Embrace it because it'll only get better from that point on. You'll find the benefits that I've already detailed in this message that God will protect you. He'll shield you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. And ultimately, you'll gain eternal life. God bless you. Let's pray, shall we? Now, Father, I pray for my friends in the name of Jesus. I'm asking, Lord God, that you would help them and me to be people of honesty, to choose the pathway of honesty. The Lord, if we live in this world where everything is deception, um, from politicians to, to, to business people to, to uh, neighbors, Lord, uh, it just seems like it runs rampant, lies and deception. But I pray, God, that you'd help us, as I've said many times, to be bright light and strong salt. That, Lord God, we would embrace the truths that we learn and that, Lord, we would pass them on to others so that others may be rescued by the way, the truth, and the life. Bless my friends here today. Help them to make that commitment to simply say in their heart of hearts or where they're at and they're, they're, they're watching this right now, that they would say, Jesus, would you please forgive me? Would you come into my heart? Would you be my forgiver and my leader? Would you make me more like you? Help me to find the pathway of honesty. Help me to find the pathway that will lead me to life everlasting. For I know, Jesus, you are the way. And I trust in that. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you again. Thank you for being with us. As uh, next week, we'll be talking about uh, 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 the pathway to love. You won't want to miss that message. And uh, it's going to be a great one. God bless you. And we'll hope to see you next week. 
Continue to pray that God will open up doors that we'll be able to gather together, that we'll find a, a cure or therapeutics that will make the, the COVID-19 not something to be uh, so fearful about. And I pray that the love of God, the love of God will banish all fear in your heart and mind, knowing that He holds you in the, in the palm of His hand. God bless you. We'll talk to you later.